Hello teacher, welcome back to our video and in this video we are going to continue discussing the different methods under the indirect learner centered approach. So earlier we have talked about the method problem solving, laboratory, inductive and a bit of the discovery method. So once again discovery method um, here, this is a kind of method wherein the learners undergo the process of observ observation. So as a teacher, you will get, give them a set of um, facts or details that they will observe. Or say, for example, the um, the set of plants, the healthy plants, and then there's some um, yellow plant or some so on and so forth. And then they will compare their observations, the facts that they have gathered, and they will come up with a generalization. Um, actually, um, generalization could only be best made if they have really conducted an experiment, right? So with an experimentation, there is a um, discovery method. And the next um, method under the indirect learner-centered approach is the concept development method. So in concept development method, um, it involves the um, Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy, the Keika Asa knowledge comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, and it focuses basically on the HOTS or the higher order thinking skills, just like listing, grouping, labeling, and synthesizing. So why is it um, simply paglilista? Simply paglilista lang na ibig sabihin na na develop na yung concept no yung pagkakaintindi ng concept yes of course because a student wouldn't be able to think of similar things that belongs to a certain category if he or she does not understand the concept very well so how can we ensure or how can we help develop the uh, this one the concept development of a learner through this um, method so we let them be involved with the HOTS or the higher order thinking skills like listing grouping labeling and synthesizing now here are the other models or the teaching strategies that we can use in teaching science of course we have this brainstorming which is a process of generating creative ideas through free willing discussion brainstorming grupo grupo dihaban and then they will share their ideas or brainstorming or in filipino baguhang utak okay next is the constructivist teaching of course we we'll let them learn through hands-on activities because we believe in constructivist teaching that the, the, the learners already have a prior knowledge and when we let them experience another um um, another thing then they will be able to gain or to construct a new knowledge okay so of course cooperative learning um, earlier we have um, touched the different um, strategies specific tra strategies or structures under cooperative learning wherein the learners will be grouped into or they will work in pairs with, or with other their, or with other classmates now distance learning it's not um this is what we are doing right now, right? Right. So we learn through the uh, distance, um, though we are not together in a classroom in the four corners of the classroom, but still we can deliver the lesson that we need to learn. So this is uh, this is very much away from the traditional um, classroom setting, right? So distance learning through the use of technology, and next is field trip again this is best for those um, visual spatial learners um field trip could occur outside the classroom okay so through field trip they will be given exposure to the real people and events so science where where can we uh, conduct field trips at zoo or the science centrum or anything that is um related to uh any place that can give um, sufficient knowledge or that could supplement the knowledge that our learners need. So next is the thing we call panel. So it's not research panel na panel ha, pero it has the same thought, okay? So sa panel, it is consists of group of three to six. Oh, this is six. I'm so sorry for the type of error. Persons having a purposeful discussion. So, um, Basically, sa panel, let's say for example, your topic is about environment. So, mura po siya o katugong po on, um, sa interdisciplinary o multidisciplinary approach. Now, mo na example po na 3 to 6 persons. Say for example, poverty. So, what is poverty? So, you will invite people. You will invite people like um, a politician. Sige, politician, a farmer, 
a isa pa tanong lawyer a doctor so 36 person so your topic is about poverty and then you will ask their opinion their point of view about their uh, about this poverty so as a point of view ni farmer about poverty as a point of view ni, uh, ni politician about poverty how was si doctor as a point of view ni bia, niya about poverty so through them um, different point of views through this one a method panel so our learners can learn so they will be able to do kan amurag mag internalize sila nga ay o ing ani jure ang effect niya so next is the peer tutoring of course the thing per share or something like that interview or something so students help one another on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in small groups okay teamwork okay reflective teaching Okay, so a response to past experience. So you will let them um, recall their past experience and then they, you will um, let your students write, of course, this, uh, alam nyo naman ito no, reflective uh, learning. Kasi uh, ito kadalas yung pinapagawa sa atin, okay? So through, ano, through reflective um, teaching or through reflective learning, your students will be able to learn still through their experience and then they will be able to evaluate kung ano yung ginawa nila, how they, how they responded or kung ano yung ginawa nilang decisions before. Okay, so role-playing, spontaneous way or portrayal of a situation similar to real life. Okay, role-playing and simulation. Okay, take note ha, magkaiba itong silang dalawa. How is, how are they different? Si so role playing, ang role, ang uh, role play. So, nai role or specific character nga ginasundog. Moral siya o ka ng class. For example, um, Florante at Laura. So, you will let your learners, what, re-enact a specific scene from a story like Florate at Laura role playing the students will take over another role okay so how about si simulation pag sinabi natin simulation they will enact parang real uh, parang real situation talaga so let's say for example you as a teacher science okay so you will let them uh, play a game paint me a picture so Masaman, paint me a picture na nagbaha. So, parang ganun. Ano yung gagawin nila? Ano yung nakikita na nila na scenario? Again, so role-playing, nakikibasihan nga story or something, events, and then simulation, real-life situations. Okay? Simulation. So, better getting simulations because the learners will be able to think of what are the things that they need to remember or what are the things that they need to do when a certain um, event like that, certain design will happen okay so socratic method of course the teacher will ask students a series of questions so socratic method or socratic questioning question uh, basta socratic questioning siya. okay next is a symposium formal activity where two to five persons discuss a topic before an audience so symposium yeah, uh, alam naman natin no merg meron na tayong background kung ano itong symposium they uh, the students will be gathered or in your class simply in your class you can invite um lots of uh two or five persons that will talk about different topics okay so Ano, ang kaibahan nitong symposium at saka yung panel kanina. So, si panel, one topic lang and then different point of views from different people. Itong si symposium kasi, um, lahi-lahi siya o topic. Okay? Mula siya, lahi-lahi people o speaker, lahi-lahi po sila o topic. So, yeah, that's it for the different um, teaching strategies or models that we can use in teaching science in our future learners. So thank you so much teachers. God bless you.